I wanted to talk about a few notes on the Canon R5 and specifically CF Express cards. You can't just go and buy whichever one you want because you may have some limitations, especially with 8K RAW. I'm going to tell you guys which ones I've tried, what type of results I get. That way, maybe you can make a little bit better decision. So let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below what CF Express card has worked for you. All right, so this is actually kind of a little bit of a muddy area because CF Express, it's gonna be pretty new to most people. Not many cameras have had it, so there's definitely been some confusion. So right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you guys sort of the process that I went through with CF Express and what I learned. The first card that I got was a 256 gigabyte pro grade gold card. Now, I looked at the specs like most people and it said, you know, 1700 megabytes and 1400 and it looked pretty fast and I thought this has to work. But then I went and found out that that is really just the burst speed or the highest rate that it can go. What you have to look for is going to be the constant minimum write speed. And a lot of manufacturers actually don't even mention this anywhere on the spec sheet. So what's the result of me using that 256 gigabyte card, which by the way, has a minimum write speed of well under 400. It's somewhere in the 300 range, 300 megabytes per second. I tested it with the Blackmagic um, disk speed utility. So basically what happens, most formats on the camera and codec seem to work okay, but as soon as you do 8K RAW, it would only let me do about 30 seconds before it giving me a, an error code that said, you know, the card is too slow and basically it stops the recording. A little graphic comes on the screen showing you what's gonna stop and then a few seconds later, Bam, recording stop. So as soon as I saw that, I knew that I had to get a different type of CF Express if I wanted really to do anything in the 8K RAW format. Now the other formats and codecs seem to work a lot better. For example, the 4K 60, even the 4K high quality, those seem to be okay. And even when I put it in like the 8K modes that's not RAW, like the All Eye, those seem to work. But this camera has 8K RAW and you definitely want to take advantage of it. And the card is pretty expensive. A 256 gigabyte card was around 350 bucks. So it definitely wasn't cheap. And you want to make sure that everything works. So the first thing I did to remedy that issue, did a little research and apparently the pro grade cards 512 gigabyte, I guess it's the newer generation. Those do have a higher than 400 megabytes per second constant write speed, so they will work with 8K. I actually got that in, I tested it. It recorded 8K raw without any problem. I did a speed test on it in the same Blackmagic, you know, the disk speed tester. So it's definitely a lot faster than the 256 gigabyte. And it's also a gold card. They do have the Cobalt card, which is more expensive. You're gonna get less storage space, but that one definitely has a a lot higher minimum write speed. I think it's around 1400 or something like that. So that one is pretty substantial, but I found that the 512 gigabyte version has more than sufficient speed to do 8K raw, transfers to the computer really, really quickly, and you get, you know, a little bit more storage space. Now the other CF Express cards that I did some research on and have some experience with, that's gonna be the SanDisk line. And I know that their 500 gigabyte model of their SanDisk CF Express card will work with 8K raw, now, I hesitated to buy anything less 128 or even the 256 gigabyte because I did see some stuff online that was a little bit ambiguous. There was some spec sheet from Canon, I think in Europe somewhere, saying that the 128 gig as well as the 256 gig versions would not be sufficient for 8K RAW. But of course, the 500 plus gigabyte versions are. And seeing sort of what I went through with ProGrade Digital and the smaller card sizes, I figured that there's something different about the smaller card maybe when it gets to that 500 plus level since it's going to be a more expensive card maybe it has a different controller in it or something like that that allows it to be able to do higher speeds and lastly the other type of CF Express cards that I have some experience with this is going to be the Sony Tough series I picked up the 128 gigabyte because according to that same spec sheet it said that would work as well as the 256 and the 500 all the way up so that one seemed to work from the spec sheet so I picked that up instead of the smaller SanDisk 
I wanted a secondary card just in case I need it. So 128 gigabytes, even though you're not going to fit too much AK RAW in there, it's still good to have as a backup. I have the 500 gigabyte pro grade digital one. That's going to be my main card. So the Sony card works perfectly. Even the 128 gigabyte card is faster than my 500 gigabyte pro grade card by a pretty decent amount. Basically, it doesn't really mean as much when you're using the camera because they both work for AK RAW. You may see the difference if you're ingesting the card into your system and if you have a pretty speedy USB-C card reader, maybe even the Thunderbolt 3 one. But anyway, I was surprised that even the smaller version of the Sony Tough card is really, really fast. It worked without a problem. I actually did a test where I filled the entire card up with 8K without it shutting down because of overheating. Just because 128 gigabytes, you can only fill so much. If it was a bigger card, it would overheat, of course. So I was able to fill that up without any sort of errors or anything like that. Um, as well as the Pro Grade card, I was able to keep that running up until around the overheat limit. So at least it's not being limited by its speed and you can take full advantage of the AK RAW. And now having these type of card issues, I mean, it's not unique to the Canon R5 or even CF Express. Many cameras, including the Panasonic S1H, which is my other favorite camera, have over time had certain issues with card speeds and something like that. Even the GH5, if you put in a card that's too slow, you may not be able to do sort of the higher settings. And I also run into this using the S1H with the Atomos recorder. You need not only a very robust HDMI cable, even if it's a little more expensive, I've used cheaper ones and it flat out wouldn't work. So you kind of have to get the Atomos branded one or at least a very high speed HDMI cable. And you also have to make sure that you have one of the hard drives that are going to be pretty fast and SSD or else you're not going to be able to do these raw formats and these very, very powerful formats that these cameras are putting out nowadays. So this issue, it's definitely not exclusive to the Canon R5, but I just thought that I'd put this out there just with some of my experiences with the CF Express cards, because I know we're always looking in our budget and seeing the most amount of gigabytes we can fit. But unfortunately, some of those cheaper cards may just not work at all with the camera. For example, that Pro Grade 256 gigabyte was around 250 bucks. The Sony 256 gigabyte card is around $450. So that's that's a substantial difference for the same size, but what you have to look at here is the Sony is significantly faster and lets you do 8K RAW. And then some cards like that 500 gigabyte pro grade card, I think the price is still pretty good. It's cheaper than the equivalent SanDisk version and it also does 8K RAW. But if you're gonna be buying a CF Express card and you wanna take advantage of 8K RAW or at least play around with it longer than 30 seconds, just make sure that you get the correct card with the correct minimum write speed. Really look for at least 400 plus. You definitely don't wanna be in that 300 range because that's gonna be slower than what the camera's putting out, which I believe is around 325. So I would definitely get something that's going to be 400 plus and you should be okay. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to smash that like button, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.